Okay, this session is uh, again uh, very different from some of the uh, sessions we've had in previous uh, AMS WMA uh, meetings. It's called New Unconventional Concepts and Legal Ramifications. Ugly word, legal ramifications. But, uh, and actually, uh, we're going to have a paper later on in the week uh, dealing with the uh, legal issues and weather modification. But first off, in, in this session, session two, atmospheric heating is a research tool by Lyle M. Jenkins from Eastland Scientific Enterprises Corporation, Houston, Texas, and his co-author, B.J. Uh, Eastland. Uh, Mr. Jenkins. The thing I want to bring in is uh, to use microwave beam as a uh, tool to research and, and understand the weather. The climate change, I think, is a, a reality. And uh, space-based solar power, though, can provide a clean, renewable energy source. But uh, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty in the um, the uh, development of space-based solar power, which uh, we took a particular aspect of that uh, and used space-based solar power to provide a capability to uh, heat the cold rain downdraft in a, a thunderstorm to prevent tornadoes. And we'll go into that uh, concept. But uh, the potential benefits we think will support the uh, demonstration of the elements of space-based solar power. Certainly, uh, there's one aspect here that we want to, uh, and I think these are guidelines that the National Academy of Sciences outlined, but uh, certainly based on theoretical modeling and simulations, uh, define the potential for instability and chaos, uh, do some small-scale mitigation experiments. Mm -hmm. So the particular research concept that uh, is a creation of a plasma pattern in uh, the high altitude. And uh, Ben Eastman had come up with an idea that he could leverage the effect of cosmic rays to reduce the energy requirements for the, the plasma pattern. So uh, if we can establish the plasma pattern, then uh, there are certainly some ways to uh, be able to evaluate uh, and use that to um, define certain weather uh, phenomena. and. Uh, Ben was involved in this uh, high-frequency aurora antenna research project, which was somewhat infamous. Uh, it's a heart project on the north slope of Alaska. And I'll uh, uh, describe that a little later. But here's the, uh, the concept that uh, Ben defined, that uh, we could have a, a pattern-forming beam that uh, is associated with a particular heater. And, and the idea was to create a plasma pattern in the upper, upper atmosphere. There's a little background on uh, these ionospheric mirrors. The bottom line was that they, they haven't uh, been produced because of the, the power requirements. and. Uh, his idea of uh, using the, the uh, initiation of cosmic uh, rays to uh, trigger the pattern may, may uh, indeed produce some results. So uh, kind of an overview of uh, the uh, weather modification concepts. Certainly, uh, and my frustration in attending the meteorology conferences has been that uh, you mentioned weather modification. It's uh, always related to cloud, cloud seeding. But there are some other concepts, uh, using oil slicks to moderate uh, hurricanes, 
uh, atmospheric uh, heating to steer a hurricane, and uh, using uh, the uh, selective heating to uh, disrupt the convective shears that produce tornadoes. Well, we try to identify a key volume in a storm and direct intense energy into that uh, area. And by warming the, the cold rain and the downdrafts, that uh, we would disrupt the convective shear process in the uh, thunderstorm. And uh, one of the issues would be the, the beam absorption by the the uh, raindrops we would hope would uh, absorb most of the microwave, intense microwave energy. Okay, so we got the, our solar power satellite, and uh, we need a computer simulation to tell us where in uh, in orbit we'd like to not go all the way out to geosynchronous orbit, and maybe have. Uh, the satellite in a sun synchronous orbit so that uh, we're over Tornado Alley at the appropriate time in the, the afternoon uh, to that the thunderstorms are likely to produce tornadoes. Before you cook the, the people in the, the trailer park that you just saved from the tornado. We def definitely need uh, interactive uh, feedback on the absorption and effect of the, uh, the, the beam in order to direct it into a particular area. Before you cook the, the people in the, the trailer park that you just saved from the tornado. So there's a, a pluses and minuses involved in, in the uh, particular aspect there. Um, the idea was to generate a microwave beam at a particular frequency that uh, is tuned to the, the cold rain raindrop size, do some selective heating to affect the, the downdraft, and that in turn would disrupt any uh, convective shears that uh, are creating the, the um, tornadoes are concentrating the energy in the tornadoes. So tornado genesis is not well understood. Uh, we think that they form only in about 20% of the thunderstorms. That uh, we need to identify and that uh, this is the, uh, whether people have uh, improved their uh, identification of precursors, certainly the warning times have uh, increased. But uh, there are a lot of uh, complex uh, interactions here that need to be defined to put into the, the computer program to tell us where to, to end the thunderstorm to focus the uh, particular energy, what, how much energy we would need, and uh, where in, in the storm the, and the duration of the uh, energy uh, input. But it depends on the definition of the fine st structure of a supercell thunderstorm. And we'd only looked at uh, supercell thunderstorms as uh, being a potential for interaction here. So we've, we've looked at uh, some demonstration concepts. And um, one of the, the things, the critical things, is the transmission of uh, microwave energy through the, uh, the atmosphere. And uh, we've looked at some ideas of using the uh, International Space Station as uh, a tool to define some of these early research uh, issues. So we would put a uh, rectenna on the, uh, uh, the uh, space station and have a uh, big antenna, phase array antenna on the surface of the Earth, beam it up and, and uh, collect the energy and determine the transmission uh, effects, the losses and that sort of thing.
I gave a lecture in my class a couple of weeks ago on tornado genesis. Yeah. I tell them my students this will be the most controversial topic I'll give you all semester. And there's a number of studies, how CNL, for example, that have shown that the cold pools are moderated intensely. I was cold. Yeah. Yeah. It increases the likelihood of tornado genesis. So anything you do that might decrease or make cold pools less cold is likely to increase the probability of yeah. tornado genesis. That certainly is uh, something to, to be researched before we, uh, and it depends on the, the computer uh, analysis and, and us being able to, to determine the effects of how much energy and where in the, the system that we would put this, this particular energy.